Sit down no. Okay. It is it is it is very it's let, just wait before you roll the intro. Let's just really make Are we live? Is it are we live, guys? I don't know. I don't Can know. Can we start the live. intro? That, wait, wait a second. Let's just check. Guys, do you hear us? Do you see us? Alex, are we online? Are, yeah, we, are, we, live. are we online? Are we live? We're live. Oliver, We're live. can we go? Yeah. Let's do okay, it. Okay, let's roll the go. intro. Oh, yeah, baby. Hey, how to fail and succeed. Well, we already failed by uh, three minutes. Yeah, we, we started yes. a little late because yes. of technical failures. Uh, three minutes. That uh, means that means this has to be three minutes shorter. But we don't have a particular time. That oh, still, it doesn't do matter. It okay. So we're going to be, instead of 53.2 minutes, we'll be 53.5. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to episode two of How to Fail and Succeed. Exactly, and we are Igudusman and Ju are uh, the other way around, actually. And uh, well, or failure, success is another way of looking at it. What we do is we make music, we make love, uh, and we make love to music. Uh, so we 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 make love with music, with music, with the help yes. of music. We we also we we help music to be a little more relaxed and and uh, if music be the food of fun. love, then play on. Exactly. We're both composers. We play the violin and the piano, and we do many many different things actually in life. And one of those things is obviously doing a podcast about how to fail and succeed, which is what you are experiencing right this moment. And <clears throat> first of all. We would like to announce some winners. The winner yeah. from the last stream. So for those of you who stayed with us last time, we asked you to send us the worst fail you ever did. And the one that we picked out of our magic hat is someone called Megalam. It's a strange name. Have you ever talked to your parents about that? Mega lamb. It's Mega like lamb. the ultimate lamb. It's like the. Lamb. I don't think they called. I think it's a nickname. I don't think, Do think it's so? actually his name. Do you Mega think lamb. his parents are like mega sheep or? I don't think it's Jeff the, Mega Lamb. The or, big, the or, big yak. Or Mega Lamb Smith. Well, I, in any case, yeah. Mega Lamb, whoever you are, um, he, she, or the other sixty-three genders that they're out there, uh, this is what you wrote. I once came second in a composition competition, and I was very happy with that. So while I was waiting outside to be picked up, I decided to do a bit of a victory dance with no one around. While dancing, I tripped off a curb, sprained my ankle, and had to be taken to hospital. Now that that is quite something. That well done there. That is definitely so. That what, reminds me of Michi Batsuhai. Of course it does. But before you do that, yes. uh, I, I'd also like to acknowledge there. Thank you very much for writing in, um, Mr. Or Mrs. Mega Lamb, it yeah. Lamb could be anything. Exactly, lamb could be anything. I'd also like to say that we are not alone here. We we do have a, a wonderful uh, team b behind front, behind stage, and and you can see them right now here. Hey everyone. Hey. <laughs> hey. So this is the the, the well, beautiful. It used, to, it used to be the three amigos. It's now the the one is just, remote. One is fallen out. I think it's now two amigos. The two amigos, exactly. It's Mariana. And Alexander. Yeah, we got rid of Yasha. Yasha is finito. No, no, he's he's still there. Actually, he's behind the scenes at the moment. He's on holiday. He's being replaced by the pet tiger over there. Yeah, the pet tiger. Pet tiger. Can you say a few words, Oliver? Can you quickly have some a baby growling coming in? Quick, 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 baby growling. <laughs> I hear some kind of re weird reverb. That's no, that's the pet tiger. Oh, huh. okay. Cool. <laughs> um, anyway, Megalam, please uh, send us a direct message, I guess, to what? Production at the gurusmanandju.com to claim your prize. Yeah, what does he win? Uh, he, she, Megalam wins, I guess, a ticket for the loser takes it all because we love losers. Exactly. Because without investment in loss, you cannot succeed. You cannot succeed without failing. That's failing right. is very very important so megalam uh we looked at um your victory dance and you know the famous saying pride comes before fall mm. and it made us think of michi batsuai who the hell is that it's mm. a belgian 
World Cup footballer mm. who now plays for Besiktas Istanbul. And this is a video of him celebrating a goal at the 2018 World Cup. Here we go. Enjoy. There he is. There he is. Yeah. Yes, there he is. And it's a goal is scored. He's yeah. so happy. He kicks it. Oh, oh what? Oh. An, oh. oh. oh he was so happy. Let's watch that again in, in slow motion because I don't know if, if everybody got that. That was just so, so beautiful. Um, so let's see. This is this is one, one of look, look, the ball goes. It's a goal. It's a goal. Yeah. And I'm happy. Yeah, I'm so, so happy. Oh, oh. oh. concussion oh. coma. So pride yes. comes before failure and the yes. fall so uh let's celebrate but at the same time let's be uh, you know yes optimistically cautious so uh what what the thing is is it sad that megalam did not get first prize or that megalam sprained the ankle doing a victory dance would would this whole thing be better if megalam had won first prize or would it be more ridiculous? Actually, is Megalam watching this right now? Is he com is is he she commenting? That would Megalam? be interesting. Mariana, did, any, any Megalams no commenting? Megalams. No Megalams. So Megalam, thank you. I don't even know if you know that you won the prize, but yes. but you did. L the loser takes it all is uh, something actually. We 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 are streaming on musictraveler.tv, the wonderful streaming site where you can stream yourself as well. MTTV. MTTV. See what we did there? Yeah. <laughs> and basically anyone can upload their streams, performances they did, or something they filmed, and ask for a little bit of money or a little bit, a lot of money, whatever you like. People can donate to it. And um, we have three episodes of The Loser Takes a Dollar competition, which we did some years ago in Sion at the festival, where we had many duos competing against each other in the most fun and, and, and cra creative. crazy creative way. Um, but anyway, so uh, moving Today's on. topic on how to fail and succeed is managers and agents. Yes. So if you're interested in looking for a booking agent or a manager, or you're like, what is, do I need a manager? What is a manager? What is an agent? Is there a difference? Yeah, what's the difference? We're going to get to that soon. But first, let's talk about injuries. Yeah, injuries like... Like, like hitting your head against... Your like, head. yeah, exactly. Like um, sprained ankles. Um, Megalam. Like Megalam, Megalam victory dance injuries. Have you... Actually, well, first of all, let's ask the viewers out there. Have any of you ever had to play a concert or play an audition being injured? Do you have any tragic or funny or wonderful? Doesn't have to be funny, but it, and inspiring anything. stories so, about playing with injury. Please send them to us. We will read them with joy. The most heroic one uh, injury actually, you are able to win some special things again. So please yes. put it up. We will announce the winner next time. The most heroic injury. Um, pre-performance or something to do with around music or actually it doesn't even have to be music something where you injured yourself and in spite of the injury or maybe because of the injury you were able to excel um, that's right and and there, there are we we do have to go through very difficult times very often as performers like we did several times right uh du during our shows when we were doing shows i remember you um well actually i remember me having quite a few injuries well you once on the day of a show yeah. on the morning of the show did something strange to your legs <laughs> and uh <laughs> did something strange to my... yes yeah, yeah. what well, was was it the, the was it the knee or the ankle but you had to be rushed off to hospital and what, what was it did you also have a you maybe you also did the victory dance no no, no 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 i was practicing but the thing is uh so to make the long uh, short story long, uh, we have three minutes less to there. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Um, basically, in my 40s, you know, um, I started some people, you know, start the middle of crisis, so they would buy a car or something, get you know, young girlfriend or something. Uh, I started to break dance. Usually, one does that kind of stuff when one is like 18 or 20. Emphasis on break, Ex exactly. On break. So, so I started break dancing and and I loved it. I was very passionate. I still do it. And then, because I'm a complete moron, I guess, or at least I'm pretty adventurous, I decided to to start doing that in our shows. And and I still do do it in some of our shows. But at one time, I was practicing a lot, a, a lot, and doing it in the shows a lot, and obviously not warming up quite enough. So please 
everybody who, who, who does sports and also music, very important, always warm up before and after. Stretch. Warm down. Warm Stretch. down is very important. Yeah, warm down. Stretch your fingers, musicians. Do this because this is one of the most important things. And obviously your legs. I didn't. So I sprained. It wasn't my ankle, but it was my calf. It was my left calf. Um, Sonny, there's an animal, young animal theme. Lamb, calf. <laughs> my young left mega calf. calf. <laughs> Your YouTube name should be mega calf. Mega calf, yeah. Uh, any, anyway, uh, so basically, I, I couldn't stand on my foot at all. And that was one of the most physical shows which we were doing yes. at the time. <laughs> yes. So he rushed off to hospital. Fortunately, we had rehearsed the show quite well. So we were pretty well prepared yeah anyway he came back a few few hours later and he was hobbling you're like in crutches and we were like what do we do do we do the show do we not and i noticed in the corner of my eye a chair on wheels yeah it was uh something like this just a kind of a rolling a chair on wheels a yeah. rolling chair you could yeah. just wheel around and in. i said alexei how about doing the whole show on this rolling chair yeah. and uh you were tried. just like you were rolling. i was sometimes pushing you yeah, pushing you around I, yeah, twirling like, me yeah, around twirling you around it was really fun and I we think did the whole funny. show <laughs> well, i mean whatever we had to do it i mean necessity is the mother of invention right so we did this whole show with him on a chair on wheels and uh, because it was the only way he could move around on stage and afterwards we had some uh friends who who know us very well who actually thought that was part of the show. They're like, oh my God, what a cool idea to do everything on this. No, 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 I'm, I'm injured. <laughs> so um, there's that. But sometimes it's it can be pretty tough to, uh, as well, if one falls sick, what does one do if you fall sick? Do you play? Do you not play? And and uh, I, I, Mariana, you had quite some uh, difficult times recently, right? I mean, it was... Uh, what, what, the first well, thing we should you... say that Mariana is a fantastic flute player. Yes, who and... is right now uh, actually playing as part of the uh... Dresden Stadtskapelle no. Orchestra. Is that right? Did I read your bio correctly? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I won the Academy position of the. Stadtskapelle. You won the Academy Award? Oh yeah, my God! Oliver, applause. She got the Oscar. Applause. She got the Oscar. She won the Academy. Wow. No, no, no. Really it's like cool. it's 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 something else. The Academy position uh, at oh. Staatskapelle Dresden and Semper Oper. That doesn't so, sound as impressive. What what is what what does it mean the Academy position? So I have a contract with the orchestra for two years now, mm -hmm. and I will have the possibility to have lessons with members of the orchestra like four times a month but you're also playing in the orchestra right? i'm playing you're um, playing real wow. concerts i'm playing everything. concerts and tours and wow opera everything with them Amazing. um as like 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 i'm a normal member of the orchestra yeah, yeah your first concert was actually first rehearsal of concert was just the other day right um yeah it was two days ago but, but you almost thought about not doing it, right? What, what Tell happened? us about it. And not about not doing it, but how will I play? Because I got really sick at the beginning of August. And um, I was only sick for two days or three days with fever and everything and a bad cold. But uh, I got a really bad coughing going on like for three and a half weeks. Ended so, up in hospital, and right. I was really thinking about. Um, I was in, when I was in the hospital. They had the they they thought I have um, lung infarct, stroke, something like that. So I had to stay there uh, until everything has been checked. And yeah, that's and crazy. And of thankful, you need your thankfully, lungs I didn't have. Player. Thankfully, I didn't have. But you know, I thought about. Okay, will I tell them something or how what, good can I play? Will I be at my best form? And what did you decide in the end? Did you tell them? No. You didn't. So you just because, went ahead, you were a trooper and you <clears throat> smiled and you played. Yes. And I tried my best and they were I think they were convinced <laughs> of their decision to take me as their academist. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> but in, it's 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 a really you know, it's a difficult decision because... Hmm. Do you say something or not? Yes. 
Yeah, because they expect really a lot of you and they expect you to play at your best. And I was not sure if I could do it, but um, it was really, really interesting. I had, I had a project a few days before I had to go to Dresden. Right. And I had really bad pain and was coughing every time I was breathing in while playing. God. So I didn't know how, if I could manage to go through the whole opera without <laughs> coughing oh in my between. God. That's that's crazy. That's terrible. I, I used to I, I, had, I used to have a bad cough sometimes. I remember for you. Years. Yes, you you were coughing like months through. So yes, you, and I and I during the show I was like the only thing I thought about literally for nine was don't cough, don't cough. Don't cough. Yeah, you were really focused on, on those shows, right? <laughs> I was Yeah, but, but the so thing, hard not to that cough. time it was really different because normally when I have a like normal coughing going on, um, I can control it because when I'm so focused on playing and when I'm in a yeah. concert, yes, but when it then it does not happen yeah. normally. Normally, I know. But this. that time but I was when it's like itching, I was playing irritating. concert, I was playing mm -hmm. opera, um, Così con tutte at mm -hmm. uh, at a festival in Vienna. And it was really difficult because I was coughing while playing. <laughs> and <laughs> which is great for like flutter tongue and you know, uh, you know, staccato. You know what? Right? You could actually you could integrate that in, in, in some pieces because that could they, even become a new technique. Yeah, it's you like the you know like, the beatboxing flutist? You could yeah. be the the coughing flutist. The coughing flutist. While yeah. operas. Yeah, you. We, we, maybe uh, I should. I should uh, maybe I should write a piece for the coughing flute. Coughing flute. You, know you know what? There's a lot of solo. Yeah, pieces. but it's actually not a yeah. bad idea. I've got a lot of solo flute pieces that that I've I've published, which I would love you. Uh, we'd love. That we'll, I will record with you. Absolutely, we will definitely do a stream of that sometime when we talk about those pieces, and and we'll feature uh, Marianne as well as the wonderful player that she is. Um, Thank you. I once broke my thumb. Do you remember? The night before we left for Hong Kong, you were, you were, he once <laughs> broke his thumb, and he was I, playing shows, I some did. of the hardest shows, some of the hardest shows, with a broken, with a broken thumb. thumb. And the the serendipitous thing about that is that we were not only playing a difficult show, but a show where we were physically fighting. That's right. During the show, I mean, it's funny we're talking about have we ever played injured? Because in this show, you injure me. Do you, do you want to show some of that? Yes. This is Alexei taking his aggression out on me. Yeah, have a show look at this. Clash of the Solo. Clash, Clash of the Solo. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Take that. Well, you can. Oh, God, you had me back. Yeah. But look at that. Then we do a little dance, and during the dance as well, I managed to kick oh. you. Out. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Anyways, it's it's a kind of a crazy show where we mix, I think, something like 64 different concertos, and we play them against each other. Uh, it was a premiere with a Zurich. Tornhalle. Uh, Tornhalle Orchestra. Orchestra Zurich. Uh, which commissioned that piece, and we've done it with several wonderful orchestras like Hong Kong Philharmonic and uh, London Symphony Orchestra just pre-corona. Um, and, and it's a, it's a crazy physical show. And you were doing this show with a broken, <laughs> with a broken thumb, thumb while he was picking me up, doing wrestling moves. And basically for the few days, before, I wasn't sure whether I was going to be able to do the concert. Yes. And as soon as I arrived in Hong Kong, the first thing I went to was a room with a piano, and I started to see if I could refinger the entire Piece. I'll refinger you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I managed to play this whole 30 minute virtuosic piece without using my thumb. Yeah, it, it was crazy. Uh, but, and as well, I, I mean, of course, the question that poses to you guys as well, I don't know if you, you have any comments towards that. A, a question, a big question is there how far should you push yourself? Exactly. And can I just, yeah, I'd absolutely. like to read from a, one of the most fantastic books I've ever read. It's called The Art of Learning. It's by Josh Waitskin, who was initially a child chess prodigy, and then later he became a Tai Chi master and also the martial arts push hands Tai Chi master. And I want to just read this thing about injuries that he, he says, most people think of injuries as setbacks, something they have to recover from or deal with. From the outside, for fans or spectators, an injured athlete is in purgatory, 
hovering in an impotent state between competing and sitting on the bench. In my martial arts life, every time I tweak my body, well-intended people, like my mother, suggest I take a few weeks off training. What they don't realize is that if I were to stop training whenever something hurt, I would spend my whole year on the couch. Almost... <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to use that. Almost without exception, I'm back on the mats the next day figuring out how to use my new situation to heighten elements of my game. If I want to be the best, I have to take risks others would avoid, always optimizing the learning potential of the moment and turning adversity to my advantage. That said, this is coming to your point, there are times when the body needs to heal. But those are ripe opportunities to deepen the mental, technical, internal side of my game. So, you know, really the question is how far should you push, push yourself? Should you play sick? Especially these corona times like, oh, no, we have to stay at home and blah, blah. But still, if you injure yourself, how far should you push yourself? And, and of course, there is no clear, obvious answer. But on the whole, I would say listen to your body, obviously, yeah. uh, number one. Uh, num number two, also assess the long-term risk. Yes. Um, just in order to not piss off a promoter or piss off an orchestra or whatever uh, in order to do, do the performance, is it worth it if there's any potential of long-term damage? And yes. I would say you have to gauge it case-by-case case scenario. Of course. But yes. I, it's much better to take it easy and to... You know, cancel one or two performances, then canceling one or two years, or or just having to stop playing your your yeah. instrument. So it's a it's a it's a balancing act without a question. On the other hand, I mean, it's also great to be a trooper at times, but you have to assess it individually. Um, if you have any comments on that, any yes, anything? how far should one push oneself? Does injury elevate you to a higher level, or is it just being dumb? To play through injury exactly so if we have any 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 comments from you guys please let marianne let us know is if there's anything in particular that you you guys want to know from us and and, and any any messages that uh of wisdom that you want to you know share with the world or or tell us actually because we'd love to learn from we you. are the yes. world we, we are, are the people, people. all right so Coming to our featured topic for today, mm. managers, agents, secret agents, do we need them? What is a manager? What is an agent? All will be revealed now. Right now. After now. this beep. That's not a beep. It's a, it's a thing. Well, should we start with, first of all, what an agent should not be? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> An agent should not be somebody who who is hiding in the background and, and shoot shooting at at bad people. Well, it should maybe that's an agent in the uh, agent world. But uh, well, what I don't know. Tell me what. Well, it's just because you know we have some. I mean, we we, <laughs> we have some uh, recorded conversations uh, that we had with our agent when we were making our CD, our album. You just oh, yeah. have to laugh. Oh and, my god, that was uh, crazy! That since crazy. we're in the mood of confessing and revealing, ex agent. Uh, yes, we definitely fired this guy. Yeah, uh, this is one of the phone calls that we had with him. That's us calling, calling him. No, that's Hello? him calling us. Agent, yeah. sir. He Alexa, us. young key. I'm calling from London. I just heard the song. It's funny. My mother really loves it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's why I don't think it should be on your album. Oh. I think you should do something a little more classical, current, you know, Baroque, avant-garde, archaic, rock, postmodern, renaissance. Okay. Like techno-bohemian. I think you know what I mean. Actually, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, and then he just hung up. And yeah. This is, this, is another, this is another phone call that yeah. we had. Hello? You didn't pick up the phone. Oh, sorry. Mm. Alexei, young key. Let me guess, you like it. I really like it. It has a ring to it. Ha uh ha. -huh. I mean, the chance of it selling is as high as me becoming the foreign minister of China, but I like it. Listen. Oh, we are. I don't want you to be successful. What? 
I don't want you to be successful in your country. Why not? I don't want you to be successful in the whole world. W well, so... I am going to make you a star across the universe. The universe? Intergalactic. What? Interstellar. Interstellar. I'm going to make you number one yeah. in Uranus. The planet Uranus, yes. I'm going to send you to outer space now. <laughs> That's right. And he's. We are the biggest stars on Uranus right now. I think um, it's pronounced Uranus. You say Uranus, I say Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, obviously. Yunki, can you press the buzzer? <laughs> well, ob obviously, that wasn't actually a real uh, agent or manager. Actually, in a way, the, th the kind of stuff that he was saying was more manage managerial stuff, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, that was John Malkovich, who, who we w worked with um, several things, a very dear friend and an uh, oh, incredible actor, of course. And uh, he very kindly played the role of our agent in on our CD called You Just Have to Laugh. So you can, you know get that CD anywhere and download it and or whatever, or buy it and put it into a CD player if anybody remembers what that is. Um, anyhow, so, so we wanted to make poke fun at the role of an agent or a manager. And so what- it What are we poking fun at? Exactly, what, it sh what should an agent not do? And what agents and managers often do try to do is try to tell you what to do. <laughs> the, the, in many ways, especially the role of an agent is to try to get you performances. That is technically what he's supposed to do and, and to book you performances. And well, maybe not... for the sake of clarity, we should just define the difference between manager and agent. Exactly. Because it's not so clear. It's not and so it clear. also differs from territory to territory and from um, business to business. And, so, and yeah, different interpretations even yes. from people within the business. Yes. So generally in the classical music world because that's what we know best um a manager is someone who's supposed to shape your career have a vision have a long-term vision someone who you really hopefully have a trusting relationship with and with someone with whom together you can plan a long-term strategy for a long-term career. Hopefully. And they literally also manage different aspects. That's right, they manage your social media, your uh, interviews, this, that. Um, for example, they, they say, oh, you should maybe record a CD, then that's with right. the CD we can try to go on tour, or we can, uh, you know, we can try to get you a record deal here. That's uh, right. And maybe you can commission this composer to write a concerto for you exactly. here. So that's a, a manager really, in, in many ways- A manager does yeah. not, get you concerts directly very often yes. many managers do but the, it's yes. not primarily their role that's right and in north america for example i believe in some states if not all states a manager cannot be a booking agent at the same time so if you're a manager you are not allowed to book gigs you're not allowed to call up a venue and say hey i've got an artist who i manage i'm uh, can they perform at your place they are legally not allowed to do that. They are legally only allowed to talk then to a booking agent and say, hey, would you like to book performances for my client? And, and they would do that. So, they... However, in Europe, the manager and, art and agent role are merged. So very often that's why it's ambiguous because someone can be a manager and an agent at the same time. Yeah. And, and, and... an agent is someone who picks up the phone. Yes and gets you gigs and they really literally they can be like your jerry Maguire, basically jerry Maguire. we had a jerry Maguire once <laughs> we did we, we did. did we had uh, a wonderful um agent booking agent in in north america actually called uh, alex ravens alex ravens and and he amazing was amazing guy a, a really great guy he was i mean not in your face pushy but just very dominant i think if you haven't seen the movie jerry Maguire with tom cruise watch it and that's alex ravens yeah, yeah he was yeah. really one of the best booking agents we ever had unfortunately he was so good that he did not give a damn where he booked us <laughs> <laughs> he would like book us gigs he booked us gigs so 
eternally grateful. But one would be like over here, one would be like over there. And there was no foreseeable way. So how from, are we going to yeah, get yeah, from point A he, to point B? He didn't try to do that on purpose, of course. No, it's still in the, in the role of to look after that. And and of course, she she did. We had a wonderful manager for many years called Elizabeth Weber, who who um, actually used to manage in, in, in previous times. She managed Billy Joel himself so so uh you know she she was in incredible and she really was also a a kind of form form of guide she did a lot of guidance for us she became a very dear friend uh and and her what what was wonderful from the very start when she started managing us she said you know my aim is for you to be able to manage yourself in a few years time and and that is what we're we're doing basically. She guided us in many ways. And actually, that's one of the key things that I think we wish to impart on any yes. way that's at least any people leaving, you know, conservatoires or having won competitions or any youngsters like going into the big world. Um, I can tell you something right off. There is no manager waiting for you out there. You, you will not leave school or win the competition and there will be a, a, a line of managers waiting out there. This is just not realistic. So you can forget this. Um, uh, we have a question. Yes, uh, from two different viewers, actually. Yes. One is, is your agent John Malkovich? <laughs> <laughs> he is, of course. Yes, agent, sir. He, uh, <laughs> he is a secret agent. Uh, no, he plays he uh, he plays the role of our agent on our CD. You just have to laugh, and you can. You, there's many funny things in between the the numbers that where, where he sends us to the to to Uranus, the planet Uranus, to to perform there because he wants to improve our career, or he tells us what to play and what not to play. Something an agent really shouldn't be doing. And there are some more serious questions please okay, okay. can we, we get to that like... can we get to that shortly uh because i would just like to finish yeah. my train of thought okay. so besides the fact of um yeah so what we want to impart is that actually whether you're lucky enough to find a wonderful manager or not ideally you need to be your own manager from the very start, from be the your own manager. And we have actually a dear friend, Bernard Keres. And Bettina Mena. And Bettina Mena. wrote a wonderful book. The, the, actually called Be Your Own Manager. <laughs> exactly. So uh, they talk about us as well with, within that book. Uh, very nice. Be and, Your Own Manager. And, and, and you have to learn how to deal with things yourself. It's a kind of managerial way of thinking. Um, which is very, very healthy, uh, I think, for artists as well, because it's not as, it's not like dry, oh, you have to do all these practical things. It's actually very creative. It makes you creative and makes you also think about what do I really want in my life yes. and, and as an artist. Mariana, please. Yes, there is a question. Um, where to find a manager in the first place? And are they coming to you or can you hope to find one yourself and right. where do you find them? It's exactly what we'll, what we were going to talk about. Mm. Exactly. So, um, the thing is one has to be a little bit realistic. Um, if you just look at it, look at it from a purely arithmetic monetary point of view, uh, a manager or an agency needs to make money, obviously and they take a certain amount of commission uh, this varies from case to case and we can talk about that later but let's just say a ballpark figure for of 10 to 25 percent let's just say that for the moment 25 percent on the very high end and 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 less and nobody really takes much less than 10. and and each manager shouldn't really have more than five to ten artists really and we'll talk about why we think that um, but any good manager usually has sort of around that figure. And so then if you, and then if you think about all the costs that they need, you know, they need running costs of at least 160, 170,000 well, dollars a year. That depends on of, of, of how many employees they have if they work on their own. I mean, this is just per manager, right? Yeah. So this means that each artist that they have would need to make at least Twenty thousand dollars of commissions a year of commissions. That of commissions. means that that is, let's say, if they take ten percent, that means they have to earn two hundred thousand uh, dollars or right. euros a year. 
So right. if you don't command that kind of income, if that is not your fee yet, a manager is not going to be interested in taking you for purely economical purposes. Yeah. So this is just the reality to be aware of. Now, of course, you can have, and many people do do that. For example, but, but instead of managing, having, uh, you know, self-managing, asking a friend to friend to manage. But of course, management usually a manager. It's also a question of experience. So if a friend does it, his ex, his or her experience may not be quite right. And also another thing is connections within the music business. Connections is really worth a lot those you can though develop yourself through the years so that's very very important please meet people go out there be social talk to people talk to fellow artists meet managers maybe they're not the right manager for you yet but maybe they will be later be social be forthcoming and it doesn't have to be slimy you can actually just be very very friendly and and that will definitely help you uh, in the future to self manage or to find a manager yourself. You can even take be your own manager one step further and do what some people have done. Like a very good friend of mine, long time ago, uh, he was starting out to be a conductor, and he created an alter ego, in other words, a fake manager. So he was acting as himself, and he represented himself under a different name and i just saw a wonderful interview with hugh grant the actor and he did the same thing he actually pretended to be his own manager just to see more professional or yeah yes that's Absolutely. right to, to see nice. more professional also to... also it's so much easier to say uh alexei gudesman is he's such a great fantastic artist if you're somebody else and not me myself if if you're representing yourself and saying how great uh, you are and how many how how much fee you should be getting it, it it seems really obnoxious if on the i mean you shouldn't act like that as a manager either but it's easier to praise someone from the outside and if you're going to pretend to be uh your own manager then do it better than hugh grant because he um would make a lot of mistakes like he'd be writing emails to people saying yes uh, hugh has read the script but i don't like it or something you know whatever <laughs> but you know <laughs> uh, and he would just be signing off as himself, like uh, yours, Cordially Hugh, forgetting that he's actually supposed to be this other person. Yeah. And uh, once he actually got a phone call, and he realized it was for his manager. Yeah. And he did. He realized he didn't have a voice for his manager. So, what so did he, he's an he actor. Yes. Yeah, so doing? suddenly he just became this Scottish lady, like, oh hello, I'm the manager of Hugh Grant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, great uh, pick. Yeah, yeah. He'd love to do that all. <laughs> so um, yeah. But if, did you manage yourself when you were starting to do yes. shows? Yes. When when we started, we we managed ourselves because obviously we did we didn't have a manager at the, at the, at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, we had a few booking agents. Now that is we some we worked with before, others we didn't, and. Some some were young and some were friends and 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 just starting True. off and other were others were more experienced and some we are even still working with now after That's twenty right. twenty five years now booking agents um, that is something you can already look for with the, in whatever category you are um, of course they also have to be able to make enough money for 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 it but it's a little bit easier in in some ways so we have a few. For example, Stefania Belodi and uh, Alessandro Padovan from uh, Calma. They have a new agency called Calma, but with uh, them we've worked for many years in Italy. They're wonderful, and and you know basically they would say, hey, you know, we would like to book some gigs for you. Can you free up a period for for us? So we would say, yeah, sure. When and the, they would find one or two gigs, for example, like in this summer. And they would say, can you keep a few days free around it and we'll try to find some other gigs. So we would do that and they, they would just try to find gigs that make sense in the area of, of that. They know how much you're, you're, you're getting, they know how much you negotiate travel costs, this and that, and they would book, book your gigs. Now, then we have a wonderful manager as well, um, agent actually as well, who we worked with for many, many years, Marianne Kech uh, in Germany. Kech Artists. Cap, uh, yeah. And um, she, she artists and promotion. Exactly. She works with uh, Katarina uh, Maxfrat, um, 
and uh, Mariana has been a supporter of ours for many, many years. And like Stefani, actually, even before we were Igorismon and Jew. Well, actually, the amazing thing about uh, Mariana is that uh, she, we actually turned her agency down. Yeah. And she's still, because uh, she, she had a, that, that agency had expressed an interest in us, and we had turned them down for other reasons. For managing us back, yes. back uh, I don't know how many years, 15 and years ago. And without their emotions being hurt, they, they still came to support us at concerts, still followed us around, still gave us huge love and blessings, and even tried to create one or two performance opportunities, saying, look, we, we know we're not, you know your managers but could we possibly maybe just do this one gig for you because and, and how can you in the end say no to someone who oh yeah it was wonderful who's so supportive and and basically at the beginning when we started off we played in a few festivals of friends like julian rachlin janine jansen etc of course they're big names and we were lucky to have them as friends but but still we were nowhere in our career and then of course social media did help uh, YouTube videos back then, Rahmanov had big hands and I will survive. They blew up to, to you know, it was suddenly 100,000 views, millions of views. And there were a lot of managers who came to us suddenly and wanted to manage us. And, and uh, you know, and that was a very interesting situation. We were negotiating and speaking to really big managers, even partly, for example, uh, Harrison Parrot, we was just just for Parrot, we were talking to a lot. In the end, we realized it wasn't the right fit. It wasn't because of anything in particular. Um, so we we had a lot of interest in managing, but as well, it's a question of what how you want to shape your career. It's not just about like oh, I'm going to get yourself myself a famous manager, but does that manager fit you? Because if you don't necessarily want to play 200 performances and be thrown around in the whole world, and or maybe you don't have the repertoire yet or this or that, maybe you just, it's too early. Or well, what do right we thing? always say about uh, musicians? Famous does not necessarily mean good. Absolutely. And yeah. that's the same with agencies, with managements. Um, I was once with a very, very big famous management well you can mention who it is because they don't exist anymore even oh can i hey yeah uh. <laughs> <laughs> and um well they were notorious uh for actually uh taking artists and then just putting them in the freezer oh my god that's a that is a, such a terrible practice horrible it, so evil, maybe evil genius the, well it's it was it yeah. was cami music of course you have wonderful agents there you also had wonderful people, so it's not you cannot generalize about anything. But there was Ronald Wilford, the the creator of Columbia Arts Management, basically, if if I got my facts correct, uh, would sign on artists in order to block them so that they could promote the artists that they wanted, that they had an agenda with. So you would sign a contract, basically taking out. The competition right so you for example you'd be happy oh my god this famous management is taking me on you would sign on to them and you and suddenly you would not have any performance or you would have you would even pass on some performances to them and they wouldn't do anything about it right that's what well i had a, i had a manager who was a liar basically mm -hmm. uh, i mean i i caught him out lying several times like i said you know did you did you write to this person or did you call this person mm -hmm. he said yes and I had just got off the phone with this person who said that they never heard from him. They didn't even know who he was. So um, there are uh, evil managers out there, just like there are bad people, but there are also wonderful people too. But, you know, this is something to watch out for, that uh, a big or famous agency does not necessarily mean that you're going to hit the big time. In fact, a manager or an, art, or an agent, they are important. But it's not what will define your career. It's you that will make your Absolutely. career. Absolutely. And there's a few things you need to be doing before you even think about a booking agents or managers. Well, whatever. Absolutely there's right. a few essential things. First of all, get your shit together. Get your shit together. Do you have do you have a good homepage? Do you have a good social media? Do you have a good Facebook page? You have to have all that stuff. Then, do you have a good product? Do you have a good product? Do Are you it, think actually yes. um if it works out better for smaller artists to manage 
through or to be managed through a smaller management company who will actually care and know your name and uh, in general, yes, but actually it doesn't depend on the size of the management company, but it depends on the individual person who is in charge of you. That's right. And and how much uh, how much they have on their plate. Yeah. This is why if you... And how much they believe in you. This is, this is the most right. essential thing. So if you... Another thing to be wary of, if you're looking on, you know, uh, management rosters and websites... If you see that they have many, many artists, but very, very few managers, beware. That's Be a red beware. flag. Yeah, absolutely. That means that there's no way that they could. I, just think about it. It's just a question of arithmetic, of time management. Even if they, there's no way they could give the dedication and devotion that you would need. Yeah, exactly. And maybe, you know, they're, if they're all super famous artists, the gigs just come in anyway. But even then, they couldn't handle them in the, in the right way. So, to carry that on, so what else do you need? You need your product. How how is your playing? Do you think you are ready to perform many many times? Do you have great shows? Do you have great concepts? Do you have the right concertos? What's you, your USP? Yeah. What's your unique selling point? What what? Why should somebody book your performance? You know, do yes. you write your own pieces? Do you uh, talk to the audience in between, or are you just amazing at Mozart? because he told you himself um and, and you know what what dif what differentiates you i mean recently i signed on with a marvelous uh classical music agency called carsten witt and i actually for your had, own private for my uh, own private uh, performances, performances. And and I, not and private public but public <laughs> my own <laughs> private public and uh when i met with carsten witt that was one of his first and uh a few questions which was uh which composers do you think are the ones that you associate with strongly Mm -hmm. he, that was important for him to know. And, and I think it's important to establish that for yourself, to ask yourself those questions. What is my USP? What is it that I think I play better than anybody else? Why should someone come to hear me? Yeah, and this is, this is very, very important for you to know. Then, photos. Do you have really good photos? Please get good photos. Please. Guys, there's so much crap out there. It's unbelievable. And not just your friend who, who says, oh. oh, I've got a professional camera. I mean, some it classical can, it can music work. photos are some of the worst photos it, in the world. Look, it can work, of course, if you have a talented amateur friend. Sure, they can make it. You can even make good photos on the iPhone. But if you're really serious and want to get a booking agent manager, try to hire. There's some great professional photographers who do not cost the world, who, who are just amazing, like Julia Vesely, who does so many of our photos, and, and she is just fabulous and really, really affordable by any standards. Yeah, I have a question. If you were a young musician, yeah, and you if we were, were. <laughs> if, we, if you were a young like, musician, musician, get him off, out. get him off, out, get, out. Uh, wipe him out. Alexander, can we do, the, can we do the thing where he's just block, block okay, we're, okay, yeah, okay, we're, just all right, no, super no, young musician. Humor me for one no, second. we'll humor you. Okay, humor, what's humor? <laughs> yes. yeah. So, and you had let's Alex say, Huben, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this guy is an yeah, incredible film director creative man and we're so lucky that you're with us thank yeah, you yeah. so much um so if you had like 1000 euros to spend yeah. let's say yes where would you prioritize your money for your marketing uh, buy, a... uh, buy bitcoin i think i would just buy <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna hit a million in 10 years no anyway. but let, <laughs> so... let's say because you said photos are so important for social media yes. is that like or your social media in general not necessarily for social media I mean, but, that's a whole also, other topic of yeah. itself. But, uh, you know, basically, at the end of the day, quality equals time equals seriousness. You, can, you, you don't even have to pay for it if you do have a professional friend or somebody who's really good. So there are other, and you do some exchanges for them, you, you play for them. Uh, <laughs> you have or, to think, imagine how many people, uh, you know, I mean, in the old days, of course, it was actually you know portfolios landing on desks mm. now of course it's landing on the desktops yeah right but it's the same thing you can imagine how many these managers they're just just mass overwhelmed overwhelmed with, with the next one who wants to be you know on their roster and this is another uh realistic fact to mention is that only really like one percent of musicians out there 
get a manager or or keep a manager but you can do so much yourself but again like he said before get your shit together get <laughs> your you know your social media get your homepage get you know your good get videos make some great audio and video recording get yeah. you know play it's a gig. becoming even more important today because yeah. we're in such an audiovisual world absolutely make make sure it sounds good when you film something get a good sound for it. Of course, there's so many factors. Of course, it's so expensive and complicated. Oh my God, I need all those things. Yeah, yeah, you do. No shit, man. I mean, there's the. It's not an easy job. It's it's it just isn't. So just get your stuff together and 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 focus and and make a time. Don't don't say, oh my God, I got to do something, everything really quickly so I can book gigs. No, take yourself the time. Do it well. Do it professionally improve all the time as a musician as an artist and and then you will find everything that you want to find i think in the end yes and if you are really talented you might just get lost if you just by something unfortunate as a bad photo because i could just easily imagine so of many course. managers and agents who would just look over a million portfolios and they would see something that looks like it doesn't have quality and they would dismiss it sadly books do get judged by their cover oh absolutely in these days i mean it's so much like oh who's that artist oh good does he oh he doesn't have decent photos forget it you know i mean this is i'm not just making this up same thing as social oh, how is their social media oh oh it's not a lot of clicks on on facebook or on youtube or whatever so so you know it's a balance between everything um so just you know take your time to do it and um we did we're very happy to do it and therefore we have some wonderful performances like on the 2nd of october and for that we have actually recruited some quite extraordinary musicians because this uh, is part of a, a series at the tornhalle uh, düsseldorf called stars, stars and, and freaks. freaks yeah but freaks spelt like free uh, r e e k s so we are inviting some extraordinary musicians who are out of the ordinary, who may not necessarily have their spot in the limelight of the of the concert halls, or but have a USP. They definitely have a unique selling point, and maybe yeah, maybe we can present one or one or two, just a few moments of one or two of them that we're going to have on the second of October, and then also what we want to announce, very important in the second, yes. is that we want you to be part of our concert too. But let's have a look at yes. this star and freak first. Of all. This guy is called Petra Spatina. These are just normal glasses filled with normal water. This is no magic. But he's making magic. So beautiful, it's such amazing. a musician. Fantastic. Incredible. Um, um, unbelievable. So he will be there on the second of, of October. Is one of our. Guests. I wonder if those were filled up with wine at some point. Oh my God! That that would I that mean, would be. Maybe we should do that. Ask him if you should do it with wine. Let's try it. Maybe you should do it with wine. I wonder if it works. Maybe let's let's talk to him. That's a good idea. What what do you think, guys? Glass harmonica with wine, and uh, these ladies are called some handsome hands. Some hand, some, some hands. hands. Get it? See what <laughs> okay. they did. Let's so this is, check this out. So, oh, what's happening here? Ooh. Oh, it looks like there's a fly in the in the auditorium. You see another fail. But what do they do out of that? Must have been a bee. Thank you. 
brilliant musicians as well. Very cool arrangement. Do they do their own arrangements? We have to ask them. We have to ask them, huh? Incredible. Fantastic. Just, just excellent playing as well. The amount of work that went into this. I can't wait to see this live as well. Oh yeah, girls, go! Oh my god. Great arrangement. Yeah. Great playing and great acting. Yeah. The whole package. So, of course, there will be other people we will be presenting also uh, in, in, in the concerts. We have a whole series of, of uh, four concerts we, a year. We have a cellist, Christoph Stradner. But let's not say oh, what he's going to okay, do. I we think won't it's say gonna be, that's okay, going to be an amazing surprise. surprise. Yeah, he's, now, the question for anyone watching, and please pass this on if for all those who are not watching, do are you or do you know someone that has an incredible ability to do with with music to do something special i don't know playing the harmonica upside down or uh, or something else or something else are you a star and freak this is the question are you somebody who has incredible weird skills that maybe people haven't even seen before are you able to play the flute and beatbox at the same time are you can able... you yodel and break dance at the same time yeah exactly anything crazy like that because we will literally invite you and pay you a fee wow you even get some money yeah on the 2nd of october uh in a show in dusseldorf at tornhalle dusseldorf so this is the moment for you to shine so please just write to us in our comments actually of on facebook anyway just production at igurusmanju.com production at igurusmanju.com exactly or put email. a video uh put it up unlisted send us the link or, or listed or listed yeah anything. listed for the world exactly so send us the link we will review it exactly and uh and don't worry if the 2nd of October doesn't work out for you. There will be other opportunities. There will be other possibilities. We will definitely invite you if you are. Once you're on our radar. Marvelously that's, fabulous. That's the other thing. Talking of radars, mm. you want to get on the radars. Exactly. Of people. That's how you're going to get a manager and agent. Show yourself. Be, yeah. Expose yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think on that note, I think it's been about an hour of blabbing right now. Yes, so I there's think so much to talk about, but so not enough time. Yeah. Not, we not will, enough time, Mikey. Not enough time. We will be back. What movie is that from? You also get a prize. Do, do you? An orange. You get an, an orange. orange. Yeah. An orange. Um, anyway, uh, we will be back. We will let you know. In what should we talk about next time? Please also. Yeah, give us some ideas. Have, if you have, we can also talk about this issue more. But if should we talk about else, social media? So we should talk about unsocial media. What, what you know, ideas? Give us ideas. Come on, be creative. Yay! Practicing questions. If anybody has questions about how to practice this, or yeah. you know, we could do a whole thing on practice. Whatever you send it to us. Whatever you want, we will incorporate it for you. Uh, we try to cover as much as possible. Of course, um, anything that we didn't cover, you can. Uh, find in our book, yes. Rette die Welt. This is basically it's in um, German, but it's just it's, learn German. It's the to read Bible it. for all musicians who read German. Yeah, it's quite a, a small a Venn diagram. Yeah, it's spot. a very small Venn diagram. Yes. it's not just for musicians. It's it's about creativity and everything. So check that out. Check out our homepage. <laughs> check out musictraveler.tv where you can find all of our streams. Like and subscribe to us, even if you don't like us, and if you, if you, you know don't want to subscribe, just. Press the button. Who cares? It's we're in the age of pressing yeah, buttons. Yeah, just press just like and subscribe. If you're depressed, then press the button. Okay. Funny, it's it's interesting, but playing the piano, you depress the keys. Mm, that That's is sad. depressing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, weren't you going to cue some kind of music? Oh yes. Where, just, I was well, waiting for you. Oh, oh, was that the heroic bye? That was <laughs> that was beautiful, actually. It was it beautiful. Did really great. And I just saw, yeah, yeah. You, you, there was is one, this the last question? Okay, yeah, there was one last, last question. question, but I had an idea. Yeah. Because the question is, how did you decide on the name? And on um, the name, what? It good as man and Jew. The next topic could be, for example, how to choose an artist name because that's difficult oh. to. Oh. Yeah, how to choose names? 
in general. general. Because um, How to choose names. The <laughs> viewer who asked the question, yeah. he was he was like, "Did you consider calling yourselves the Judas Man?" The Judas Man. E Judas Man. E Judas Man. E -Judas -Man. E -Judas -Man. Um, like it for the next life. Yeah, actually, that we even have somebody made us a, uh, a sticker called Jude, True. Judas Man or True. something. We did like, Guido yeah. Frackers made us a he a was wonderful a tour, tour, manager. tour manager. Tour manager. Now that's a Dif whole different type other, of that's manager. A different type of manager, but also very important. We thought about our name for a long time, but we will talk about that next time. So we will definitely incorporate the name the name thing next time. And until next time. Be safe. Be well. Thanks for tuning in. Stay creative. How to remember, failure is the key to success. Absolutely. It is. See you next time. See you next time. So, what's that? This isn't none Hello? of our Agent, sir? Alexei, Yankee, congratulations. Your album has 12 hits. Wow. Where? On the Billboard charts? No, on YouTube. And it's also very popular in Colonia di Sacramento. Uh, wh where is that? It's a village in Uruguay. Just a yeah. Uh, you know what this industry. Yo me voy a Uruguay porque.